Buying Star Wars Destiny cards is a ritual for some, a hobby for others, and a chore for a few. We take a look at the various ways to acquire your collection and tools to help you assess the value of each method. We also take a look at the latest prizes to come out of the Galactic Qualifiers and the recent Grand Championship prize reveal. This is episode 131, The Value of Cardboard. You have been well trained. No, you don't have to carry a sword to be powerful. No. I won't fail you. Oh, do not. I'm not afraid. Oh, there is no trade. Hello everyone, we're back for another week of the Chance Cube, here live on Twitch for those who are here to join us at Tuesday <laughs> evening, 9 p.m. Solar Eastern, players occur. daylight time, yes, yes, for those who were here for the pre-show, they got to see us talk with no faces because my, my entire system decided to not exist, but we're back. OBS is kind of a jerk like that sometimes, well, too. Well, I mean, it's also free. So I know. you kind of have to work with free. Even really a... good, like, even streamers, YouTube streamers that I've that I watch that mm -hmm. have millions of subscribers use OBS. Yeah. So that tells you that even if they have the money to pay for it, they ain't paying for anything else either. So Nah. Everything else is too complicated to work. I mean OBS is can it is fairly it, it can yeah if it wants to be. If it wants to be. Uh Kim, what's that behind you? I got a new shelf. Wow. Finally. Well actually we've had the shelf. We just never got it put together and brought it upstairs. So Chewy lives back here now. His head's a little cut off. So maybe I'll push the camera Wah, back a little bit. There's Chewy. <laughs> and over here is Old Han and a Millennium Falcon. And then here is that lovely popcorn bucket from yeah. our friend. Well, his, our friend is what he is. The popcorn bucket was from you. My friend who sent it to me. And the Death Star's around here somewhere, but I figured you wouldn't really be able to see it, so... Well, that's all I got for now. I have some art I might put back there. Not a lot, but I feel like the there's not a lot in the shot. I feel so. like that shelf is a, a homage to like everything you've had on this show over the last like 50 episodes. It kind of is. Right. I'm going to get that picture of us from Orlando printed and I think I'm going to put it right there. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. And everything else I'll block. So everything else now becomes storage. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, very good. Yeah, I think uh, my work schedule is finally going to allow me to go back to my game shop next week. So I got to find out what the girl for me. Yeah. I think I am. I did not make it last week, but I'm attempting to make it this week because because I'm going to take my I talked about the Think the Maker box mm -hmm. from Parker Simpson last week and I got it and I want to take I want to try out that new playmat see if it brings me any good luck. Mm, it should. It should bring you good luck. We'll have to show this here in a few I minutes. don't know. I mean, you know, whatever. Good luck. Luck it's is the luck. die that are problems. Well, when Parker Simpson starts making dice, then they can be good luck for you. Maybe that might be the. Maybe I should. I should tell him to do that. Yeah. Too bad that's not as cheap but as I'll... making fan alt cards. We had fan alt dice. Boy, wouldn't that be cool? But then you, but like, it's so hard. Like, so I play D and D. And one of the arguments made about that sometimes is how balanced are your die so that they're consistently rolling the right. Like, is it is it truly random or is your die when it was molded slightly heavier on the side or the side? A long time ago, I saw somebody cut um, Destiny die in half to see if there were air bubbles in them or not. And wow. it was there were some. But it was mostly even across the... I swear it was an original OG Vader die, but I could be wrong. I don't know if anybody else saw that. It wasn't... See, thank you. I'm not crazy. Vindicator said it was a Vader die. Um, and at the time, that was still a very pricey die. So we don't know what that guy was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Well, not anymore. He knew that He knew that in a, two years later, it wouldn't be pricey at all. It was the Terror to Behold one? Oh, this was more recent than I realized. Okay, so yeah. he Maybe he was getting out of the game. <laughs> Is that the only way to, is that the best way to assess a balance of a die? To cut it um, I have heard there is, you can test its buoyancy. Like, but I'm like, but that was on, but when I read that, that was more for like D20, like, and I don't remember, it's been a while since I saw that. Um, That's a great question for uh, Mr. Breeze, because he would know the answer to that. Mm. 
But I thought there was something that you could do. Uh huh. Okay. I think there was something that you could do to test the buoyancy. Oh, for Pete's sake. Noisy flip and flop. The house is shaking, you guys. I'm not kidding. Wow, that was... Uh, welcome Only to my small you. town life. <laughs> Where no one has a muffler. <laughs> so do you have the do you have the pictures? Did you get the pictures I sent you? We'll share with the kiddos if you want me to, to share what was inside the Thank the Maker box. Uh, can we do it in a different order? Yep. I don't care what Excellent. order you want to do it in. So we're going to... Let's go ahead and jump to the news, and then we'll then we'll share all your good stuff after that. Cool. Well, in the meantime, there's my shelf. And I will take uh, recommendations on what else I should try to fit back there. Okay. Uh, while you all think about what Kim should put on her shelf, uh, we're going to jump ahead to the news. Let me take that back, huh? Let me find what you need. <laughs> this time next week, we will be talking about all the world's news. Uh, we think. Ooh, we hope. May 28th, uh, next Tuesday. I need to try to set a reminder to try to watch that right. stream at work, but I'm sure I'll have some meeting drop on top of it. FFG has promised us a FFG live stream next Tuesday at 1 Central. 1 Central. So 2 p.m. Eastern Daylight, uh, 10 a.m. for those on the East Coast, or sorry, West Coast. West Coast. <laughs> I hate time zones. Right. Um... And then uh, like 7 p.m. for those in England. And I don't know about Denmark, but I'm sure your destiny knows. But that about does, that. and I guess in all fairness, that time is more inclusive across the globe for people to be able to tune in versus, so it's not in the middle of the night wait, necessarily. Wait, wait, hold on a second. Kim, are you defending FFG and their time? Yeah, I know. Somebody write this down. It's going, it's, <laughs> I was like. It's going in the summary that, description of this but... show. <laughs> Kim praises FFG. So I get that. So that's cool. So that everybody, you know, like somebody else. Yeah, there's more opportunity for everybody here at the same time instead of well i was asleep when that when that, you know mm -hmm. fair to all involved i suppose yeah for sure um but uh, so we're getting world's news next tuesday uh, nice but we just got more confirmation on the grand championship prizes so i think Those everybody cool. remembers uh, probably a month ago matt holland posted um kind of casually some of the prizes for the grand champ it was like it was like a one-shot image right and it had pictures of um the ob grievous art uh it had pictures yeah. of the grievous playmat and it had the dice slash trophy, trophy. thing um so we, now we've gotten a little bit more information about these prizes which is really interesting so the grand championships there's a uh, one uh, this is what used to be called nationals so there's one of these in every supported nation quote unquote Right. Um, so this is the one that's going to be at Nova uh, for the U.S. and um, the rest of the countries. Uh, I'm sure we'll, you'll you'll see their posting as they are announced. Um, but the top 32 hero and top 32 villains. This is the first time they've done this. They're actually huh. they're actually from a prize perspective promoting well giving out prizes based on the faction you're playing. Interesting. And so if if a villain is the hot meta right now, right? Because villain kind of is when you think about um, you know, yeah. all the Watto decks and the Palpatines and everything. If if the top fifty Wada, decks, Wada, Wada. if the top fifty decks have like five hero decks in them, then like place number fifty one through seven, you know, seventy may get these prizes. That's interesting for for heroes, which I think is kind of cool. And if I'm if I'm misunderstanding that, let me know. Um, but that's what I'm understanding is that the top 32 hero and top 32 villain. Or is it the only other way I could see that is if it's top 16 and then they pick if they went hero or villain. That's the only other way I could see that unfolding. Well, cause if you look at the X-Wing prizes, um, they have top, they have a, like a top 32 per faction. Card. Oh, so depending huh. on the faction you play depends on if you get this card and then, you know, you have to be top 32 in that faction, which I'm sure it's going to be a challenge for the organizers to actually, not only identify to identify who those top 32 are with those factions of decks um yeah the only challenge with destiny is uh you know where you have to pick if you're a neutral what side you're playing on yeah there aren't many neutral decks out there but are, there are a couple Hankira is one um mm -hmm. that is still you know a neutral deck 
and it's odd that they would create a price support around heroes and villains when the game is designed to have neutral teams. So we'll see I, how that unfolds, I, I, my hands I suppose. Up in the air for that. But so the top 32 get um, the top 32 heroes uh, get this Obi-Wan alt art. This is the one we saw already um, uh, with the trooper helmets and uh, shields. And then, I like course, those shields. The grievous art for the villains. I feel like they took a nod on the shield tokens. I feel like they took a nod from all the aftermarket ones that have been purchased. Mm hmm. Because uh, I know there's some really nice looking, I've seen uh, from a couple of different uh, stores, some really nice looking helmet shields like that. Yeah, for sure. And then, uh, so let me see if I remember my hotkeys. Yes, I do. Perfect. Um, so the Grand Championship top 16 hero, top 16 villain, um, there's actually a. An ass an assortment of cards um and they look spot gloss so it's the it's obi-wan a satine and a dagger of mortis for the heroes mm -hmm. and it's a grievous um commando commando droid, droid. and hellfire yeah yeah um so those are the uh prizes for top 16 heroes top 16 villains i almost feel like the people uh, i almost feel like this will drive a balance. I, I just, I still feel like there's going to be a balance in the playing field because of this. Because some people are going to say, I'm not going to be top 16. But if I bring a hero deck, because that's not the popular deck right now, maybe I'll be top 16 heroes. Mm -hmm. so, I'm really curious to see how that, like, I want some, I want them to be more clear. Because mm -hmm. I see it as the way you explain it, but then I just wonder if it's, Oh, we're only going to give this out the top 16, but hero, you can get heroes or a villain. Like, I'm really curious how that's going to pan out. There was an mm -hmm. article, right? This was just posted on their Facebook page, right? Yep. I did not see an article with it. So maybe there'll be some clarification as we get closer. Uh, top eight. Um, so this is top eight overall. Uh, so this is the Grievous Matt we've seen before, as well as some Which resource tokens. Pretty cool. Um. So nothing too terribly special here. Uh, and this is what we did not see is that, oh, that is Kim's thing. Let's skip ahead. Uh, the um, <laughs> number one, the top. I winner. like this. I'm not getting this mat, but I like this mat a lot. Gets Nor the, uh, will I pay after market prices for it. Right. Uh, this is the Obi-Wan mat given to the Grand Champion. It says uh, 2019 Grand Champion on it. Um, they get their tickets to Worlds uh, and they get their... Um, roughly what I'm understanding is a four inch die, uh, for a trophy. So, Hey monk. Um, so it's pretty wild. I like it. What do you think? Yeah. Now I, the artwork, I think they stepped up their game on these mats. Like I like them. I like this, this kind of art style they've gone with on the mats for the series. Mm -hmm. For sure. The Grievous was already cool enough, but I'd love that Obi-Wan mat. Right. Um, it's, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I've got three months to get good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I no. think I might need longer than that. Not longer than these. <laughs> Monk's right. He's like, it's sexy. And I agree. Like, I've always had a crush on Ewan McGregor's Obi-Wan, so I think that might be part of the reason why I like that, Matt. I still wish he would come back and do a trilogy of films. But, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe someday. Maybe someday. Okay, Kim. Uh, oh, I didn't put. Um, I don't have any. You want to talk here, about? But well, the you want to talk about spot glasses at GQ? Yeah, spot glasses at GQ. So, uh, Convergence came there's, out. So, there's more spot glasses at GQ. There's, yeah, there's one more that is not in this list that popped up after somebody posted this. Mm -hmm. So, I believe uh, we shared a post from your destinies. Mm -hmm. Your destinies. That's not their name. Multiple, your destinies. Multiple destinies. Yeah. Uh, and just one. Then after that. Uh, Palpatine was another one that was at that GQ that was available. So Phasma, Padme, Infest Nest, Chewbacca, Jabba. Uh, then it looks like we've got the plots, Advanced Training, Profiteering, Lightsaber Mastery, and Separatist Conspiracy. Uh, I want so that Phasma. It's nice that they were like, they were ready on the release of a new set for the following GQ to have new stuff. Yeah, that was good. Not um, No kind of delay with that. I like that a lot. So they're like, Getting ahead of themselves a little bit. Yeah, which is new and exciting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they're going to have... Um, so, Origins 
my local board game convention in middle of June will have a GQ. As um, oh, really? yeah, originally that was not a thing. I um, so and then they're gonna. I know there is. Oh, I just looked at the event thing. Um, there's pods, of course. There's a draft pod, and there is. I think there are some infinite and standard events, or of course they're standard events. I mean trilogy. So I'm gonna have to find some time to burn out some tickets and some pods to get me a phasma. Mm-hmm. While we're there, so. But I believe, yeah, I'm pretty sure that that is a GQ that I saw that is there. That's awesome. Which they had been super hush hush about, and it didn't sound like there was going to be one there. But um, Origins is fair, fairly affordable convention if you're in the area at all. A day pass, I think, is twenty bucks. Uh huh. Get in. The entire Wednesday through Sunday is sixty bucks, I think. Nice. Well, I hope you get a chance to see it. I mean, I know you're going. Oh yeah, I'll have I have I'll have swing by for sure. We'll be in that area checking it out. Yeah, if playing, got... at least the very least, uh, we'll be playing some pods. So yeah, so if anybody heads to uh, to Origins, look out for Kim. She's always there. Yeah, we'll share more stuff when we get closer, and we'll be on the Facebook page so you can um, find us. If you're wondering, if you're looking for me around lunchtime, I'm probably at the North Market at Hot Chicken Takeover. Mm. That's probably where I am. Um, and otherwise, I'll be, yeah, over there checking out the Destiny stuff and wandering around the, the convention halls and all that yeah. jazz. I'm but I gotta get the Phasma, so yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I think I finally got this fixed. So, um, you've got your Thank the Maker Box. Thank the Maker Box. And I know Monk, who is uh, currently watching, did a nice live stream unboxing of his on his. I channel. know. I'm so jealous. I didn't think of that first, <laughs> Monk. Um, Mine got held up at the post office, so Monk got to do a really cool video on his. So, um, uh, you want to take us through what you found in the box? Yes. So in this cool little box, there is. Um, I can't decide if I want to put this on my car or my computer, but there is a really cool decal of Vader's helmet and two cross lightsabers. If you were really slick, you could probably turn these into two different decals. Since I'm not a like, because I feel like I'm if I put this on there, I'm supporting Vader, which is feels wrong, but but it feels so right. But it's pretty cool looking. Like it's, I think you can see it pretty well in the picture. But it's a very nice um, decal of Vader. And there was also an alt art, old Luke. So one of the alt arts that Parker has done for old Luke as well as Jabba. So the artwork on these are super cool. Mm -hmm. I was like. It's hard to capture the essence that is Jabba the Hutt. But he did a pretty good job. So those were cool. So those were in there. And I'm telling you, like, this is... To and I think Monk would agree. It's it's $40 for this quarterly. Um, I highly recommend it. Not only are you getting really cool stuff, but you're supporting a really cool person. So. What else you got? Flip it to the next slide. Ignore those slides. Oh, this one. There we go. Yeah, so that's a close-up. That's probably a better picture of the um, the Luke Skywalker. Like I said, it's old Luke and Jabba. And you can buy the like. Uh, you can also, if you did, if you miss out on this box, you can get, at least get the Luke and the Jabba off mm -hmm. of Parker's website. These other cards you cannot get currently. I don't think. Mm -mm. So these are, um, if you saw the spoilers from the new set spark of hope right mm -hmm. i'm starting to mix up all the names i'll just be honest but uh so it has the kylo and ray that can be played together as well as um an alternate art for that plot the temporary cool. truce plot mm -hmm. so you'd be able to play both alternate arts and the plot um and then the play mat that he included so yeah you get a really nice play mat in this as well Wow. Um, features okay. the Kylo and Ray artwork on it, and it's a solid play mat. Like it's it's well made. It um, it's it's not. I've I've gotten some play mats that are kind of thin. This is not a thin mat. Um, I would say it's the consistency of uh, if you've ever bought a mat from Inked Gaming, I would say it's probably close to that consistency thickness. Mm -hmm. And but it doesn't have did not have the horrific smell that Inked Gaming <laughs> mats sometimes have. <laughs> 
That's funny. I, I have a Han Solo mat that still smells that I got from Inked Gaming. And it's been treated with baking soda more than once and left out. And I, I can't salvage it. This one seems a little longer. Like the, the one from Parker seems like it's a bit longer than my mm -hmm. normal mat. But I'm not sure. I have to lay the two together and see. I didn't think to do that. But um, very cool. Um, I'm excited to take this and uh, give this mat a try. See if it brings me any good luck oh, at good my luck. local next week. That's awesome. But yeah, like so I just wanted to share with you guys because I know I talked about it. Um, I'll have these photos. So if you're not watching the stream live, I'll get these over. Um, we'll post a group photo or something like that on the Facebook page and give a give a nice shout out to Parker too. So check out his website. Buy, you know, if you, if you like to collect alternate arts. Um, and don't forget, there is a... Uh, we'll have to come up with some more clever, cool ways... But the Chance Cube, even, we have our own Parker Simpson artwork card of Watto. That's mm -hmm. really flipping cool. We do. So actually. we'll find some more ways to, uh, our Patreons are currently receiving these. Yep. So, so they're exclusive to them right now. But uh, there might be, might be an opportunity in the future to get your hands on one. Yeah, and if you join before the end of the month uh, at the $5 level, we will send you one of those for sure. So we also... Okay. There, there's... When they're gone, they're gone, kids. So there's a limited supply for now. So <laughs> when they're gone, they're gone. Yep. And... I ha I don't have a secret key to unlock more. But wait, there. Oh, there's not more. Okay, just kidding. <laughs> but All by right. then, maybe we'll have to find some other cool alternate one to exclusive one to get. What? There, there may be. Uh, cool. Yeah. Admiral Pendragon, let me double check. Cause somebody's asking about the GQ. I've seen mixed things on it. So let me double check. I know Cascade Games is asking for judges and stuff for Destiny events. So they're definitely holding at least some tournaments to be able to turn out some stuff. But uh, I'll do some research and get back and confirm with everybody. Because I've seen I've seen yes and I've seen no. So I'm I'm I could be misinforming you. And the events page for Origins is kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, according to their website, they are still they are Cascade. still listing cas according to Cascade's website. They're still listing pods for uh, Keyforge, Destiny, X Wing, and um, L Five R. Mm. And it does not say how to buy. Uh, I'm sure tickets are through Origins directly. So, yep, you have to buy them through the events page, which is a challenge. Yeah, I I noticed the last time I looked at the Origins page, it's not the most intuitive. <laughs> yeah, it's not the most well, and it's it's all relied on how somebody enters it. So you search, it's yeah, it's not in, it's not the most intuitive thing that you will ever. Mm. And if they don't, I'll write a strongly worded letter that they should have. How's that? I don't know if that'll make anybody happy. Oh, the difference between a GQ and pods. That's a good question. That is a great question. So are they? They have a GQ. I have a snowball's chance in winning, or no, a pod. Yeah. I have a snowball's chance in winning. A GQ. I do not. Are they running a GQ for Destiny at Origins? Are they just running pods? I'm uh, looking. They are. They are advertising a trilogy on Thursday, a standard on Friday, and an infinite on Saturday. Pods or uh, GQs. Who is? Origins. Cascade. That's what I thought. Oh, I'm a Cascade, cascade site. Oh, okay. I feel better about it. So now it's just finding the... Um, the ticket on Origins site. I'm looking for you, Admiral. I'll see if I can find it. <laughs> Admiral. Sorry, I've been watching too much Star Trek. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Very cool. Alright, where are we? What are we doing? Oh. We're going to talk about how you spend your money wisely to get a full... Star Wars Destiny set. Or not. You know, Mike, I just can't seem to get the cards I need in the booster packs I bought. I'm still missing a Mother Talzin, a Darth Maul, and I need some more battle droids. That five wide droid deck isn't going to build itself, and I have all these extra Yodas. Seriously, Kim, I told you. Check out Armada Games. You can buy and sell Destiny cards on their website, shoparmada.com. It's just a few simple clicks and BAM, you are done. I used it just the other day, and now I got two, count them, two mall sabers heading my way. Hey, what are you guys talking about? We're in the middle of a break here. Jason, you know how you've got all those extra cards from all those booster boxes you open? Mike says you can sell them online super easy. No way, seriously? How? I've got to make room before this next set comes out. 
Jason, whether you're new to the game or a seasoned vet, Armada Games has just what you're looking for. You can buy and sell your Destiny singles all from the comfort of your living room, pre-order the latest sets of boosters, and find the droids you are looking for. You can also check out their selection of Destiny accessories. And you'll get free shipping on orders over $75. For an even better deal, be sure to use the coupon code THECHANCECUBE and receive 5% off your Destiny purchase. Visit their website at shoparmada.com. Armada Games. Get in here and game. But you know what I always say. Speak softly and drive a big tank. So this week we wanted to talk a little bit about what I'm calling the value of cardboard. Uh, this was a little bit inspired by my uh, hastily written article on expected value. I, I'm not really sure how I came across this, but I know in card games that tend to hold value a lot longer, such as Magic, especially the older sets for that. Game. Oh, man. Um, I have some friends who are heavy into Magic, and the, some of the card values are ridiculous right. compared to... We haven't even begun to see high-priced cards. Right. For yeah. Sure. Um, and there's a lot of... Uh, there, you know, there's several sites out there on the Magic side of things that talk about expected value. Um, and this is the idea uh, that a booster box, which is random assortment of cards, you can estimate how the value of that booster box based on, um, you know, the random assortment of the cards and the value of each of the cards and each of those rarities uh, to kind of guess, uh, to kind of give you a guideline on um, is it better to buy a box of a booster box or is it better to just go ahead and buy singles or a set? Um, and uh, so that's kind of where this started. Uh, and then it kind yeah, of got us into the idea Yeah, that's a fair of, thing to, yeah. Kind of got us into the idea of, you know, how do you acquire sets? You know, we just, um, um, Alexander Holder Markland, that's a name I haven't said on the show. And uh, it's one of my favorite names to say, too. Not only is he, he's such a cool guy, his name is so much fun. Right. Um, uh, he, he was with the Chance Cube very early on, writing articles for us. Uh, and then fell out of the game uh, for various reasons. His local scene kind of he tripped and fell right out of it. <laughs> um, and he just he's been like, recuperating ever since. He has been. Um, and he I don't know <laughs> what inspired him to go out and buy like I think he bought everything up through Legacies. Oh my! Um, he like he but just bought full sets of stuff. Um, ah, I'm sure he bought them off someone you know who was selling their sets. Because... Yeah, because there's still a lot of people that I see regularly, like on the black market group or in groups in general, that are unloading their full set. Um, so, you know, that, that certainly is a way to get cards, you know, try to buy off sets off other people. If you're, um, mm -hmm. if you're new to the game, I, I really do think there's going to be a spot for infinite in the future. I think what FFG did with, it'll uh, get there. The point cost is really going to get, um, some players excited. So I think there's going to be people to play, especially since the GQs mm -hmm. are supporting it. Um, that's, I think that's the, I think that's huge. If they continue to have a GQ that supports it, you'll, you'll have interest. Which means that these older sets, which are currently not retaining value, like this is the time to buy. For They're not retaining that. value. I have lots of cards if anybody needs any. Um, <laughs> I bet you do too. Yeah. Um, so how can you get your Destiny cards? Now, so the word value has a lot of different meanings. You can talk about monetary value. You can talk about the value of the experience or what it, or it means to you personally. Sure. Um, you know, uh, Sarah and I for the longest time would purchase two cases of each set. Mm-hmm. And when you think about the, the money it is that so much that, fun to open the packs though. Right. Like, so you are paying a. I have well, I have to like add this in there. Yes, I'm paying to get the cards that I need for the set, but I am also paying for a slight bit of entertainment in opening said packs. <laughs> right. Like, so you need to factor in like the cost of a movie or you know something like that because I'm being entertained the whole time that I'm doing this. Right. And that's I think it's important. It's important to to consider. Um, you know, when you're buying boxes and cases and even just regular booster packs, there is an inherent value into the thrill of the chase or, or just, oh, yeah. just opening up and seeing what's behind, you know, door number one. Um, so Do you know how excited I was when I we went, like, on a streak of, like, five packs and I buying one or two at a time and I hit a legendary every time? I didn't. We determined right. that Jim was the lucky person and not me. But okay. regardless, there was a let – like, that was – that was a really lucky streak, and it totally sucked when it ended. But that was, to me, that from your standpoint, that was money well spent. I spent three dollars ish, mm -hmm. maybe six dollars, and I just got a fifteen dollar card or a thirty dollar card. I mean, that's 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 a good turn. That's a good turnaround if you're a gambling mm -hmm. type person. Sure. That's a good. Yeah, it didn't last like all gambling does. <laughs> Never does. 
Um, uh, so uh, Team Covenant, which I think they've now officially changed their name to just Covenant. Um, ah! I don't know. Ooh. They've asked me to change their name on our price watch, uh, and then eventually they're going to send me their prices because their website is, is not scrapable. Um, but uh, Covenant sells saga sets. So yeah. if you're looking into buying, if if the thrill of the hunt, the thrill of the chase is not your cup of tea. It is simpler. There are various places if you want that... to get full sets when they feel... come out. Yeah, I feel like that's like an instant gratification kind of thing. Like, I'm going to have everything at my disposal immediately. I don't have to because, I mean, how long? I mean, you guys bought a lot of boxes, but I think it, on average, it was taking us three boxes to get at least one complete set. Mm -hmm. And so, are you doing that all at once? Or are you buying it over the course of three weeks? Whereas if I bought a Saga set, I have everything right then and there. Mm -hmm. And then I can just go out and start playing. I don't have to wait. I don't have to chase things. Now, with Covenant, I'm a little frustrated that their Saga sets is only one of each Legendary. So there's... I think that was... Oh, helped. is it? I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, that's helped to control the cost, I believe, of, of mm -hmm. the set itself. Um, there are other sites. Uh, Kingwood Hobbies, I know, sell sets. Um, I don't know if they uh, sell them, um, you know, have as many available uh, as Team Covenant oh. promises. Um, but Kingwood Hobbies also sells pre-made decks, which I think is a really neat idea. Um, they that sell, is a neat idea. They sell $10 decks. Um, so they're thematic... Um, playable out of the box decks that are not, uh, they're certainly not tier one or tier two if, by any means for 10 bucks. I mean, you're talking about an assortment of rares and, and commons and uncommons at that price point. Um, but if you're just getting to the game and you want, you're, you know, you're tired of playing your starter at sets or your two player box or whatever, like that's kind of a neat place to look. Um, yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, and Admiral Pendragon is, is, is jumping um, in about uh, Saga sets, saying the first uh, uh, there's the waiting period with Saga sets because they have to wait till the street date to crack open their boxes to build Saga sets. Oh, uh, well, that's fair. So, uh, and I'm thinking like those. Pr I'm surprised that more of those pre-made decks haven't taken off. I mean, look at how a, a game like Keyforge that is that's all that it's made up of are yeah. pre-made decks, um, and they're random. <laughs> Um, I, I like that idea and it's, and I just wonder if it's that as not as many people know that it's available versus I'm not a good deck builder. Like that would be beneficial to me. I think it'd be beneficial to a lot of folks. And I think Keyforge has shown that, that if they're, if the game is good and, uh, you can, you know, buy the package deck or not. And it re that really goes, that should be an, a message to FFG too. Like the success of Keyforge should tell them that their starter deck should be complete and playable out of the box. But that's just... Ta-da! <laughs> I know the dice and production and I get it, but still. They're never going to make an argument for me that is like, other than, oh, we're saving costs. I'm, okay. Yeah. Like, okay. it's still not... Okay. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. Um... So we talked about the thrill of a hunt with booster boxes. Um, you're always, and, and I hate to say it, in general, well, that's actually not true. I'm going to uh, totally, I'm backtracking on my thoughts. I'm having a conversation with myself that no one else is listening to. All right, well, you have a good time. <laughs> um, <laughs> there is inherent value in purchasing your boxes or packs or cases or whatever from your local game store versus Absolutely. an online store. Absolutely. It, Even though it, you will probably pay more. Unless you go to House Rules Gaming in Kissimmee, Florida, where I play. It's the lowest prices around. Just saying. Nice. I, and Personal I think, plug. I mean, think of what you're supporting at your FLGS because you're not just buying it. You're not like you're paying for you're not. I mean, because I, I don't think mine are my store prices them reasonably. They're not overpriced by any means. They're mm -hmm. the same price everybody else is getting them for. Um, but supporting my FLGS is supporting the place I can go to weekly and play. Um, not just Destiny, but for other events that I buy there. It's, it's, I don't know. Like, there's something to be said about supporting the little guy, your FLGS. Not that a couple of you don't have very big FLGSs in right. your neighborhood. Sure. But, uh, that, that, I, I don't think any of us, I mean, where are we going to go play <laughs> if all of us start buying everything online and there are no more game stores to play at? Where are we all going to go play? The local community center. We won't, so we won't I love that. my That's FLGS. <laughs> like we, there's a great staff there. They run super fun events mm -hmm. and I don't mind. 
I, their markup, I would say, is more on some of their their board games than it is on things like Destiny. Gotcha. I mean, they're they're marking it the same as everybody else's. They're not going above that, but. Um. So that kind of brings us to like actual value of cards right and so one of the things we've done recently um i know we've talked a lot about the uh the updates to our price watch that we've done we've got both on our website and on our iphone app um we're now looking able to pull prices from various stores for every card in the set so now we can get a pretty good sense of not just the dice cards but um cool. kind of where uncommons and commons are trending uh and and quickly make calculations uh, on the average value of each different rarity with each different each set, uh, which makes the idea of uh, expected value in a booster box much easier to calculate and recalculate uh, periodically. That's cool. So as of like five days ago, uh, convergence, a box convergence, was running an expected value of $166.89. Um, the, the rares, the, sorry, the legendaries in this set are... Uh, now this is... You know, not compared to Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh or Pokemon or anything. This is just compared to other Destiny cards. The value of the legendaries and convergence are running pretty high. Um, you've got Entourage. Yeah. You've got, um, right. The Mega Vader Blaster Spith, Trooper. Mega Blaster Trooper. Um, yeah. There's even Fat Yeah. Uh, there's just some great legendaries in this set that are really driving the price and the value of these boxes up. Um, and the idea of expected value is, you know, if you buy. 10 15 20 boxes um that should be the value of all the cards you get on average over the course of these boxes it's not one box is gonna get you this much um and of course you have to deal with reselling so you know that's that's effort too um, sure and these, and these values are calculated on our low end price so the cheapest way the cheapest way you can purchase these cards um from stores across the net um and across the galaxy is also coming in at 147. So that's showing that both those sets still are holding a lot of value right now, mm -hmm. um, and are actually a better deal uh, purchasing boxes and cases than it is going out and getting singles. Unless you know you're looking for a one single card. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but what <laughs> the idea of calculating expected value also shows us is that Awakenings is only pulling 26 bucks. It's about what they're charging for boxes of it now, though that's true that's they true. are at bargain basement prices because and somebody brought up too like you, you'll see that change because there was that recent sale on amazon which mm -hmm. appeared to be from ffg but sometimes amazon sellers are weird like that so i i don't want to say for sure that that was going straight from ffg to amazon because i don't honestly know whether or not it was and it was it was all the way up to way of the force and i think that got down at some point to 35 40 bucks a box mm-hmm I was surprised to see anything from the Legacies waves get that cheap. I was not surprised to see additional markdowns a little bit later on stuff like Awakening Spirit of Rebellion because the demand isn't there. Unless you're playing Infinite, why would I buy a box of that at this point? Because you, you're playing Infinite and everybody needs to play Infinite. I don't know. Anybody want some Awakenings cards? <laughs> it's too... There's too much thinking for Infinite for me. It's just... it's. It's too deep for me. It's too, too, too much. much. Too much. It's too overwhelming. You just pick your thirty. I gotta go cards. look at a whole. I gotta go look at a whole list of different things on cards to figure out their pairing values. It's too much for me. <laughs> um, so it's just interesting when you think about uh, the, you know, the secondary market in Star Wars Destiny is really interesting too because, oh know, yeah. We've got different ways. We've got different avenues of reselling our cards. You can resell them to a store. I know Miniature Market um, takes. Uh, there's a lot of stores uh, that do take buys on cards. You're getting almost yeah. half to a third half. of their market price. Yeah. Um, you can. I think take... my FLGS is half. I think Miniature Market is less than half, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, but then you can go on any of these number of uh, black market trade groups on Facebook, um, on the discords, and get almost you know. A market value or a uh you know at least a chance to keep low price on almost any yeah, card and it varies uh especially the more popular ones let me put one caveat out there the chance cube price watch is not the end-all be-all price on cards a card that you'll sell be worth however much someone is willing to pay you for it <laughs> that may or may not be the price reflected on the chance cubes price watch we are just an average of prices on the internet we are not stating that this is the price you must sell it for so quit getting all angry about it. Wow. There. 
<laughs> you have some res- just <laughs> some... <laughs> averages, people. It's just averages, and sometimes they're not perfect. A card is worth however much you can get someone to pay you for it. That's true. That's very true. It's called supply and demand. That's true with promos, too. I've, we've been getting a lot of questions recently about promo cards and the value of promo Those cards. Are, that's super tricky because and that I, depends on how bad somebody wants it. And I and I understand. Like, we used to have a, a, a tab on our website sheet that had a list of promo cards. But all we were doing was taking the last sale price from eBay. Yeah, so that wasn't – yeah, that wasn't your best – That's nowhere near a, a valuation, especially if the last sale price was four months ago on something that was – you know, exceedingly rare or exceedingly common yeah. at the time. Um, those promo cards can change. Oh so yeah. Much. From week to week, whether like, uh, I'm trying to think which was the set, like where there were cards, like it was only available at, what was it? Maybe it was Gen Con. And so there was a week or two that is the only place that you could have gotten one. So those cards were worth, were pulling. I don't necessarily want to say that they were worth, they were pulling a large sum of funds for other people who wanted them because I want it right now. Nobody else is going to get it. And then it was a few weeks later that that was available at another event. And so then the somebody who paid $150 for this card, it's now going for 50 bucks because the, because supply and demand people go back to your economics classes. The market was flooded with more supply mm-hmm. than there was demand. Those promo cards are hard. There's some of the, there's a few online retailers that sell them. I know. Uh, and I, like a couple, yeah, there's not, not very many. many. Kingwood, I know uh, they have a good list of promo cards with pictures. Um, I don't their their stock levels change frequently. Honestly, if anybody needs a good list of promotional cards that are out there, um, you can go to Kingwood's site and click on their promo. Uh, That's cool. Thing most of them aren't for. I mean, they don't have a lot for sale. Uh, last time I checked, especially the older ones. Um, but at least it it shows you what's out there. Because um, I think most of those go from player to player. Mm-hmm. Like, I got it at an event. I don't want it for whatever reason. Or I was able to get multiples at an event. So I'm going to sell this off to help recoup my cost for going to that event. That's pretty popular amongst uh, some of the more competitive players at Destiny. Yeah, because they don't. And I get that. Like They're bounty hunting promo cards at GQs for people. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. And that's cool that they can. Like, if I had unlimited time in Origins, I could sell into a bunch of tickets and help you guys out. But... Mm-hmm. I probably like I love you all very much, but I won't end up sitting there the whole weekend. But <laughs> right, very cool. Um, I think that all goes to so only only you can uh, make the proper decision on how to acquire your cards and your yeah. sets. Um, whatever what what is what is it important to you? For us, it's always going to be the thrill of the chase uh, and supporting oh, yeah. our local game stores. So mm-hmm. as often as we can. We're purchasing our boxes and, I, and our cases from our from our friend down the street. Yeah, uh, I feel like I have changed how I go. I don't know if you have. Um, well, I have based Awakening on Spirit of Rebellion. Well, yeah, Awakening Spirit of Re- I had to have all the cards. I was a completionist, and then I went. This is getting really flipping hard to get all the cards, <laughs> and it, this is kind of costly. And then it was, and then we learned that there was going to be rotation and stuff like that. So then I I have absolutely changed to. We'll get a box or so, get what we get, because that helps you get a lot of the comments and stuff like that. And then what decks do I want to build? What cards am I missing from that? Because So we've been filling out some of the fun stuff from our sets. Like, we picked up a couple wrecks. Mm-hmm. Um, things like that. I'm trying to think who else I got. A few other characters. Well, I got Dengar, and then I've opened, like, two more Dengar since then. So now I have an abundance of Dengar. I need one more. Oh, I you, you're taken care of, buddy, because I don't need five, four or five of them. That's what I have right now. So it's like, but now you go out and you buy, and then it's, and then, oh, I'll buy this pack here. I'll buy it because it's fun. And when you're, or sometimes our store does win a pack. Like, so if you win, if you win on Wednesday nights, however many wins, you may get a pack for that. Mm-hmm. And then I, and that's, and so that's, or drafting, that's another fun way to round out your collection without mm-hmm. having to go all in on a, on another box of sorts. Yeah. But I found myself going after the cards that I need to build a deck that I want. And not, and stopped trying to be a completionist. That works because it hurts. It hurts my wallet. Mm, I'm still a completionist, but I also and my storage I'm, I'm shelves <laughs> stopped by my abilities to actually purchase it. So uh, someday I'll catch up when uh when convergence. Well, I got a Dengar coming your way, buddy. I'll hook you up with that one. Oh, thanks. There can be no mistakes this time. 
So what uh, character do you think is designed well and is due to be the next breakout star? That's the question we posted over on Facebook. Um, you guys had some really great answers per usual. So we appreciate all you guys going over to Facebook, commenting on these, because it's fun to talk about each week. Uh, Marshall had said Ahsoka, and I would love to see Ahsoka be a next breakout star, because I feel like she she just sort of kind of got popular the last time we had her, and then... Um, so he says, great dive for the point cost, hurt right now because of awake, awkward pairings. If they make a solid way to, to make a big hero, Yoda rumors, she'd be a great little, she'd be a great little to pair with. I would totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, John Ibsen uh, is always commenting. Thank you for doing so. Mace is going to get better and hopefully, uh, as hopefully the next set will give Blue some love. Unlimited Power Mace is a fun deck to play. That would be fun. Mm -hmm. uh, our friend Michael also mentioned Ahsoka, especially since Knighthood is a card. Okay. Ooh. Oh, fair enough. Uh, and Eric uh, said Qui-Gon. Just, just Qui-Gon. Is there a new Qui Gon? Mm, yes. No. Like I'm, I'm just, I'm drawing a blank. No. It was a Qui Gon in the last set, or the one before it. Oh, so he's still, in, he's still around though. He's still around. People, yes, yes. He had, he had some, he has some splash fame here and there, but uh, the next breakout star. Let's hope so. Um, I could, I would be okay with Ahsoka uh, again because I wanted her to be so good last time. Oh, I did, and too. it just, it just wasn't there. And so this one, she's not going to be your big bet, but she could be a great um, sidekick. You know, now that Ahsoka is uh, in an infinite deck, it would be interesting to look at Ahsoka because Ooh, now you've got maybe, better yeah. resource generation. Yeah. Because that was her big flaw before, is you couldn't have enough resources to make use of her ability, her ability. often enough. Yeah. Um, but that'd be interesting. That'd be worth taking a look at. Even though it's mostly villains that have the best resource generation right now, but Ahsoka Yoda? The old Ahsoka with a Yoda? I don't know. I'm making up stuff now. I'm right. I'm, I'm, it's late. You know what? <laughs> Everyone, thank you for watching. Oh. For Almost those, past my bedtime. For those who are watching live, thank you so much. Uh, thanks, Monk, for the sub today. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime, subs are free, and it helps us keep this channel alive week after week, month after month, year after year, as we're on year three right now, which is kind of crazy. Holy cannoli. Um, and just hit the follow button. Uh, you'll get notifications every time we go live. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, hit the bell. Uh, more videos are coming. Podcasts, please Give us a review. Um, those really help uh, keep this podcast at the top of the Star Wars Destiny search. Thank you, Matthew Scott, for hanging out on the Facebook page and letting everybody know that we're here. Thank you to all our Patreons. Uh, please check out Patreon. Uh, we have a $5 and a $15 level. Um, right now, the $5 level is getting our fun alt arts, and we've got some great um, artwork coming our way uh, for that. Yes. And as always, if you're an Apple user, head over to the App Store. Check out the Chance Cubes price watch. Um, I know it costs a pack of cards, which is a little high for an app, um, but that money goes directly to supporting the efforts of this channel um, and the enormous cost it costs to live stream the Grand Championship from Nova. <laughs> Internet is not free, kids. It's not. Never not even a little center. bit. Not even a and, little bit. And if you think we could just put it on our phones and do it, yeah, so is everybody else on their phones. So that no work is so good. Yeah. If you've seen us at Nova, you know what kind of setup we bring. Um, and which that stuff we already have and is funded, but is uh it's the internet calls that always tends to break the bank there. Um, it makes it tough. But we got some neat ideas coming. Hopefully, uh hopefully our booth will be a little bit more uh populated this time around in terms of things to see and look at. So uh more to I know Monk asked if we were going to Washington and I got all excited thinking he was gonna be in DC. But he's talking about Washington State. No, which we're not. You can't get much further away from me. <laughs> Washington State. Way over there. Way over there. Um, head over to our Facebook page. Uh, this week we're asking, what is your favorite downgrade and why? A little a little uh, brand new card type. and uh, They're kind of fun. They are fun. A little played. but uh, i got to find the one that I like. I'll make sure that I, I have that to talk about next week. Because there was one that was my MVP in a game a few weeks ago. And uh, that, that is all. And I can't wait for Kim to talk about her little secret at some point. Ooh, am I excited to talk about a little secret soon? Can't tell you yet. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. 
This has been the Chance Cube, a Star Wars Destiny podcast, a nonprofit organization dedicated to building community through gaming. Visit our website for all things Star Wars Destiny, including our price watch, meta tracker, and latest articles from the Chance Cube family. Find our latest videos on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and visit us at patreon.com slash thechancecube. Your patronage allows us to grow this program and help us give back to the gaming community by sponsoring events, giveaways, and supporting our own community building initiatives. This is Mike Hill, the voice of the Chance Cube. Thanks for listening. The Chance Cube is not affiliated with Fantasy Flight Games, Lucasfilms, or the Walt Disney Company.